Going back again to Della Reese, Woody Frazier, hiring Dan Kibbe as one of the writers on Della Reese and Virginia Graham. Dan Kibbe worked on Mike Douglas Show. Uh, Dan's wife, Mary, worked for John Campbell, who was the president of ABC. Uh, Dan's wife worked for him as an executive secretary or whatever. Um, John left ABC at one point, moved to California, became president of the SeaWorld Parks in San Diego. Right, president of ABC Television, now becoming president of SeaWorld Parks when they were just originating uh, um, in, in San Diego. Um, offered Dan Kibbe the job at SeaWorld. They had a big entertainment department. SeaWorld at that point when uh, it was really heavy on entertainment, you know, theming the whale shows and, 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 and that kind of stuff. But, you know, instead of just making it a natural park, they, they would uh, theme it with some kind of a theme. And the first show I did for them was Shamu for Maker, Mayor. Shamu for Mayor that Dan uh, wrote. And I um, uh, can't think of his name. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. Well, anyway, the, that, was, that was the television connection with SeaWorld. Dan turned down the job and offered it to Bob Laporta, who was also a producer of uh, Mike Douglas' show, moved to California, became vice president of entertainment for SeaWorld, producing shows for SeaWorld. So that was my initial connection through Dan and then through Bob Laporta. And then, oddly enough, another producer, when they opened up another park, Lynn Gillum, uh, Bob Laporta brought Lynn Gillum in and also to doing uh, at, at Parks in Orlando uh, themed production for their shows. And we did a lot of stage shows, we did a lot of animal shows, but we did a lot of stage shows also. So there's a big television connection, you know, for the theme world, Sea World Parks. Uh, and that, that lasted 20 years, basically. Uh, the Orlando Park opened in, in 73. Um, the San Antonio Park opened up in 88, I believe it was. But when, uh, so I did several big shows, theater shows, at both parks, actually, at Orlando and in San Diego. San Diego, I did City Streets, which was another Bob Laporta-themed show in New York City, um, where it was a, a, a theater that outside that sat 3,000 people. There was a, a, a central square, it was called Sullivan Square, it had two subway tunnels, and the backdrop was a city street. Um, and the 360-degree set, Martha Johnson was also the designer on that. Now, there's more TV connections here, too. So the, 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 the 360 degree was a um, L station, an L station and, and the L trains going all the way around it. So it was a unified set, pretty big place. I think that one cost a couple of million to, to, to do this set. But the subway tunnels connected with the, with the apartment buildings. So the actors could go down and it was uh, street actors and it was a musical show. Uh, it, it, had, it was a big production, really big production. It was extremely detailed. I mean, we did just like New York Street for Seinfeld. Extremely detailed, there again, all the, all the storefronts were dressed. Um, extremely real. We even had subway sh sounds, uh, big speaker systems. Um, uh, it, it was all designed by set designers that I hired, extensive models uh, that I had to present. And that's another interesting thing, too, about presenting models to the SeaWorld executives, which is interesting. Um, and then I, ha I hired a crew from Los Angeles to come down and build the sets. So it was a totally Hollywood production, you know, for SeaWorld Park. And that lasted there for several years. That, that, that whole theater lasted several years. Uh, there was um, another, another uh, uh, stage show. We did a couple of stage shows. One was in Orlando, and it was called Undersea Fantasy. Uh, uh, I, I designed and, and directed um, an introduction film. It was a girl looking at a fish tank. And it went back into time, and it was an undersea, undersea set. It was a lot of coral, animatronic figures, 
um, a lot of entertainers. It, it was a, a really great place for a young entertainer, musical variety kind, the, uh, singing and dancing and all kinds of stuff, to get into, into the business. And that was a big production, and it was lit by David Hersey, who won a couple of Tonys. I mean, yeah. this is a SeaWorld park. It was amazing. And that's and that I think was uh, fifteen hundred people, fifteen eighteen hundred people in that in that theater. So there was theater, and then and of course the when I did the animal shows, the Shamu sets. You know now you're dealing around salt water. So you, you the, the sets had a you know stainless steel or there had to be all kinds of stuff you know and and uh, safe for the animal. Um, it, it was quite a challenge and another very you know diversified design project, you know, design uh, problems to, to solve, you know, which was really amazing. Uh, and a long-time relationship with Bob Porter and Lynn Gillum, uh, really creative guys. Um, uh, they, uh, since then, uh, Bush bought the parks and to basically got rid of all the entertainment and made them ride parks. You know, so it's a whole different concept now. George Millay was the guy that originally uh, designed and built the first park in San Diego. I interesting guy, very interesting guy. Now, John Campbell left uh, San Diego, moved to Florida, and became an executive for Silver Springs Park in Florida. So I did a lot of design work for Silver Springs, uh, an underwater set for Wiki Wachi, which were the mermaid shows that they had. Uh, designed their theater in a, an underwater set, again with Dan Kibbe. A lot of stuff with Dan Kibbe. I designed an antique car collection uh, for uh, Silver Springs. And every every uh, genre of car had its own set. Like a 1950 car would have a drive-in diner set. You know, so it was that was kind of fun. Um, uh, boardwalk and baseball, another sh set, that, uh, a park that didn't last very long.